Okay, so today we are announcing full BMS communications with the Solark inverters and both versions of the EG4LL batteries. Uh, we're going to walk through uh, each type and how to set them up after they've been configured and then the EG4LL version 1 uh, needs a firmware upgrade and we're going to show you guys how to do that. We're providing the firmware in a zip file on our website and it uses a uh, custom cable pinout for an FTDI chip which is going to be on our website if you want it pre-made or if you happen to have the cable we'll show you how to use one that you already have. Okay, so if you're going to mix version 1 and version 2 batteries uh, for communications closed loop with the Solark inverters, you're going to have to use the version 2 batteries as the master and then build your version 2 communication chain and then come off the end of that communication chain with your version 1s. So if you had six version 2 batteries and six version 1 batteries, you would start with the version 2 battery being the master and then you would come off of it, connect to all of your version 2s, come off the end of that version 2 on the last one and connect to your version 1. So we're going to show how that works over here. We've got a version 2 which is programmed and selected for Solark and we have obviously the uh, version 1s we were just using. Now I've got to change this version 1 to not be set as master. It's really important that you never use address overlaps and none of the addresses but one are the master address which is the one that has to connect to the inverter. So in order to change these addresses I'm just going to go and pick turn switch 2 on. You've got to reboot the BMS. If you don't reboot the BMS then your address is not changed. So uh, if you have an issue, uh, make sure all your dresses are configured right and then turn the batteries on and off. That's what we're doing right here. So I've got the bottom battery connected to this battery, which is not a master anymore, connected to this battery, which is now a master. I'm going to go and connect my inverter communications cable to the CAM port of this V2 battery here. And we'll power it on. So now we'll go ahead and turn on the inverter show the BMS communications successfully operating over here wait for the BMS information to pop up and we have a discharge current capacity of 300 amps here showing the three batteries and a charge capacity of 150 amps Okay, so if you got a version 2 battery, uh, selecting Solark should be relatively simple. You have to set the address to where all switches are towards you facing the front. All of the dip switches are down uh, on the ID setting, and then you power the battery on. When you do so, you're going to go to the third button from the left. You're going to hold down, let go and select the CAM protocol settings. Go here, enter, and you select SLK, which is for Solar. Other protocol settings are here as well, including Victron, uh, Duya, Mega Revo, Lux Power, and Crowatt, but this is the Solar one, and so let's go double check that we have selected that. And there we go. After you select that, you're going to have to restart the BMS and of course set the first one to master. So we're going to power the BMS off. We're going to change the ID back to master. And then we'll power the BMS back on. And that's really how simple it is. So in order to update the version 1s, uh, you have to have a USB to RS-45 adapter. This is a relatively standard cable. There's a link to it on Amazon in the video. We're going to be selling the cable for $5 to help uh, reduce the cost here on our website. If you need technical support to walk you through this, we can also do this with you with remote desktop. Uh, it's a basic cable. It has a standard uh, adapter for the pins. Uh, and it utilizes pins 1 and 2 of a standard Ethernet cable. And we'll sell the whole setup, so you just need just this one adapter cable. And... Uh, the orange wire of a standard Ethernet cable goes into the T slash R plus. The orange white wire goes into the T slash R minus. 
This cable gets plugged into the RS-485 of the battery that you are trying to update. And then Marcus is going to show us how to run the update program. This program is going to be on the website and we'll flip over to a screenshot and explain what we're looking at. So you're going to use the PIC updater. And then in the same file, there will be a hex file, which is going to provide the adjustment that we're looking for here. So what address do we need, Marcus, in order to do this? Zero. Address zero has to be set. So we're going to power this BMS off, and we're going to select address zero, which is all dip switches down? All dip switches down. Okay, so we have address zero selected now. The BMS is powered back on. We'll import the hex. I love this one. It's Victron. Yes, it's the same file that you use for Victron. You close the COM port and you start the update. The screen will go dark. Light on. The alarm light comes on. And your standard adapter is going to flash that it's sending information on the TXD and RXD terminals. After everything's been erased, it starts writing. And every battery of the version 1 will have to be written over like this in order to achieve communications. All right, that's it. So. A few people have had issues with the first couple batches of the V2. Uh, any batteries we're sending out today will not have this issue with uh, firmware, but if you have a V2 with any issues with SolArc, it has the uh, same, uh, a different loader that goes with it to get the same effect. So we're going to show that in this video as well. Connecting the cable to the RS-485. Pulling all switches to zero position, powering the battery off, and then back on. The same cable for both batteries. You gotta reset the BMS. Now when we hit start, it says please reset BMS. We have to go to the reset button and hit that. So when the battery powers back on, it'll be sending a signal to the program and the program will know it has good communication. So now we have that set. We import the file. And we write that here. And the battery's been flashed. So that's really everything, guys. I know people have been asking for this feature for a long time. Uh, we're excited to be able to provide it. And uh, we're ready to support anybody who has any questions trying to achieve closed-loop communications. Thanks for watching.